RBS-15 anti-ship missile, Swedish surprise for Russian warships. Ukraine's war with Russia is becoming increasingly fierce. Russia does not hesitate to use its Kalibras and Iskanders to flatten residential areas of Ukrainian cities. The Ukrainians respond with long-range missiles against warehouses, headquarters, and bridges deep in the enemy's rear. And for this purpose, the West begins to supply the Ukrainian military with more and more modern weapons, very accurate and long-range. It's becoming increasingly clear that good must win in this battle between good and evil. Otherwise, the world will descend into the abyss of chaos. This battle is everywhere, on land, on the ground, and in the water. Here's how Ukraine confronts the aggressor on the water and what Sweden has to do with it. We'll tell you in this video. From the very first hours of the aggression, Russia blocked the Ukrainian Black Seaports, depriving Ukraine of its opportunity to export grain, thus provoking a global food crisis. In addition, the aggressor had the opportunity to suddenly land a landing force from the sea to seize Odessa and Mykolaiv. This would have put the Ukrainian leadership in a very difficult, almost catastrophic situation. So now Russia has lost that opportunity. Yes. And one of the decisive factors that led to this result was the delivery of powerful long-range anti-ship missiles, RBS-15, by Sweden. They made it possible to complete the deep echeloned anti-ship defense. Anyone who follows Ukraine's desperate resistance against the huge Russian bear knows that the Norwegian Harpoon missiles, with a range of 80 miles, had already been supplied to Ukraine. This secured the Ukrainian coastline against Russian speedboats and drove the larger ships far out to sea. But how wonderful it would be if Ukraine could strike Russian warships right where they are stationed, or at least prevent them from leaving the area of the Crimean Peninsula. After all, the farther away the landing forces are, the more time the defending side has to repel the attack. This would have tied the aggressor in hand and foot and deprived Putin's admirals of appetite and sleep. And now, finally, the Ukrainians have such an anti-ship missile. Meet Robot System 15, or in abbreviated form, RBS-15. The range is 125 miles, the launch weight is 1,760 pounds, and the weight of a warhead is 440 pounds, which is 249 pounds of high explosive. That is, one hit is enough to sink a destroyer or a frigate, or if you're lucky, a battleship, or at least permanently incapacitated. Let's take a closer look at this remarkable missile and understand why its use could destroy almost the entire Russian Black Sea Fleet. Let's start with the fact that the Robot System 15 might not have appeared. In the late 50s, the Swedes rightly decided that for the shallow Baltic Sea, which washes their country, large warships such as destroyers, which therefore have a large draft, are not needed. It's easier to build more small boats or corvettes but to equip them with powerful missile weapons. But the Robot 08 anti-ship missile that was in service at that time was not suitable for this purpose. It was launched from open rails, had to be stored in hangars, and required long pre-launch preparation. In this situation, the Swedish military found it expedient to develop an entirely new missile based on the earlier Robot 04 airborne missile, which had a more compact design and a solid propellant rocket engine they did not need pre-launch preparation. But the range of this missile was small, so the Swedish Navy ordered a turbojet-powered version of the missile from Saab. RB-04 Turbo was submitted for consideration in 1978, but the Navy considered it not effective enough because of the high flight altitude on the marching section, more than 20 meters, and proposed to replace it with a licensed American harpoon. But the Saab employees awoke the proud spirit of their Viking ancestors. They quickly redesigned it as the RBS-15, the superior American missile, and at the last minute, the decision was still made in favor of the Swedish model. And in 1985, this missile, developed by Saab in collaboration with the German firm Deal BGT Defense, was adopted for service. It was fitted to coastal anti-ship units and boats. Soon, the Air Force became interested in the new missile, and soon the aviation modification RBS-15 was created. As a result, it became a universal ground, sea, and air-based missile to destroy sea targets, and after modification, ground targets as well. 
The missile has been upgraded several times, and now its modification RBS-15 MK-3 is in service. The RBS-15 missile is based on the duck aerodynamic scheme. That is, the steerable tail is located in front of the wing with a cross-shaped arrangement of wing planes and rudders. It's equipped with a French turbofan engine, microturbo TRI-60, with a thrust of 450 kilograms. The engine can run on both kerosene, JP-8, and synthetic high-caloric fuel, JP-10. The engine air intake is located in the lower part of the fuselage, behind it for land and sea base modifications installed two solid rocket boosters. The thrust vector of boosters is inclined to the longitudinal axis of the glider at an angle of 18 degrees. The missile's marching speed is 298 ms, the rocket is 143 feet long. What's remarkable about this missile and why we think that now Putin's admirals should stock up on Validol and some Pampers won't hurt. First, the 125-mile range makes it possible not to let the Russian Navy out of the area of the Crimean Peninsula. Second, the flight of the missile takes place no more than six feet above the sea surface. This means that for the ship's air defense radar, the RBS-15 will come out from behind the horizon at a distance of 10 to 15 miles. This is the distance the missile travels in a minute and a half. But this does not mean that these one and a half minutes of the Swedish surprise for the Russians will be visible to them in all its glory. Here we come to the third feature. To reduce the effective dispersion area, the missile is designed with radio-absorbing materials and the infrared signature is reduced by shielding the engine compartment. So even if the RBS-15 comes out from behind the horizon, try to detect it. Any luck? Detected it? But that doesn't help. In the final part of the flight, the missile starts to make counter-rotation maneuvers in two planes, and the design allows doing different pirouettes with 8GG loads. So it still hit this rocket. But this is not all that the RBS-15 can please the Russians' quotes. The missile is guided on the cruise section of the trajectory by an inertial system with a radio altimeter that ensures its flight to the target along a straight line or a complex program trajectory. It can fly over obstacles such as islands or land, turn on the target at a predetermined point, as well as perform a counter-fire maneuver in two planes. In addition, the control system allows you to research and attack in case of failure to capture the target. In the final leg of the flight, guidance is performed using an onboard locator and a passive, which is not emitting and only working on the reception sensor. This combination provides a high level of jamming protection and consequently increases the probability of hitting the target in conditions of strong electronic countermeasures. The ship's electronic warfare system still managed to blind the missile, but its infrared sensor has not yet managed to acquire a target? Don't hurry to rejoice, Putin's admirals. Here's another unexpected move for you. In case the target's lost and cannot be detected, the missile automatically redirects to the jamming source and hits it. What a real Swedish surprise! So if I were Putin's admirals, I would think hard about what to do next. Of course, big shoulder straps, orders, and good money, that's great. But for the loss of warships, they'll certainly be called to account. And instead of a cozy office on the Black Sea coast, it's possible to appear in a cold barrack on the White Sea coast. If you enjoyed our video, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel. There'll be a lot of more interesting videos on topical issues of modern armament.